drive deep in the earth. Steel monsters drilling, hammering, vibrating massive piles. Laying on maximum force to reach the bottom. Doing whatever it takes to get the job done. You can't build up if you don't build down. Giant impact hammers are the oldest and simplest way of driving piles into the earth. But they're noisy and potentially dangerous. A sonic concussion can make nearby structures crack and weaken. One alternative, the Super Calm. The Super Kong is the largest vibratory pile driver in the world, and uh, it's designed for driving super large piles for big bridges like, say, the San Francisco Bay Bridge or any super big bridge that needs a big piling. John White is the king of the vibratory pile driver. He owns American Pile Driving Equipment, or APE. Pile drivers are a special breed. You know, they're crazy. They're wild, they're rough necks. They're a lot like, uh, uh, you know, most of them are, are either Marines or Navy SEALs or badasses. They're tough guys. Uh, they're great to work with, good, honest, tough people that are fun to be around. Pile driving is dangerous and demanding work. The Super Kong weighs in at an incredible 34,000 kilograms. When you hang that much weight off a hook, anything can happen. You know, you think an iron worker's uh, doing something crazy when he gets on top of a building, but when you work around pile drivers and they're lifting up 100 foot long, you know, half a million pound piles, things can go wrong quick. It's the most dangerous job you can be in in the United States. Here's how a vibratory pile driver works. Hanging from a crane, it clamps on to the top of a pile. Then it starts to vibrate the pile. As the pile vibrates, so does the surrounding soil. This reduces resistance, and the pile goes down. Or the action can be reversed, and a pile can be vibrated out. In Seattle, they're running diagnostic tests on a new Super Kong that's about to be shipped out to a new job. One device, a temperature gauge, works like a thermometer. If a bearing's out of whack, it registers a higher temperature, like a person with a fever. Another device, a photo tack, measures the speed of the vibration, like a speedometer on a car. If you have a car and your speedometer says you're going 60 miles an hour, the factory checks to make sure that's accurate. But you buy the car, you take the wheels off, you put bigger tires on it. Now it says 60, but you're really going 70. We can't have that kind of variance. We have to know exactly what the speed is because when it goes to the job site, it's going to drive a pile that's going to hold up a bridge that if the bridge falls, someone's going to take the hit for it. So we have to make sure that everything's very accurate. To fully understand how a vibratory hammer works, you have to look under the hood. What it does is it vibrates the piling by rotating these counterweights at high speed. Rotated at high speed, this whole box you're looking at here shakes up and down. The secret to the Ape Super Kong success is its heavy metal technology. By using solid tungsten instead of steel, they are able to drive bigger piles with much less overall weight. If I was to not have this tungsten in here, I'd have to have two, four, maybe six, maybe even eight counterweights rotating. So that makes the whole machine heavier, bigger. So what we want is something really compact. And that's what we specialize in, is something super high-tech, super compact. 
apes other claim to fame? They're the largest consumer of hydraulic vegetable oil in North America, commonly known as canola oil. It costs more than petroleum-based oil, but when there's a spill, it just biodegrades in the water. Fortunately, all the contractors that we deal with are also pro-environment, and the extra charge doesn't bother them. Or if it does bother them, they choke and pay it because it's a lot cheaper to buy the right oil than it is to pick up the telephone when an environmental agency calls you and tells you that you've polluted a water body. Vegetable oil-powered super kongs are driving piles into San Francisco Bay. It's a huge job. But John White's biggest vibro challenge is shaking it up big time in China. ships can't get into the port of Shanghai because the channel isn't deep enough. The solution? The Great Pile Wall of China. 530 mammoth piles pounded into the Yangtze River, creating two massive walls on each side of the river, making way for deep dredging in between. Driving piles that are as big as missile silos and weighing half a million kilograms requires a pile driver unlike any other. So White hooked together four King Kong hammers, creating the Super Quad Kong. But he wouldn't go to China to see it in action. To tell you the truth, I didn't have the stomach to even go there and watch it drive the first pile. It was that stressful. Stressful because the Chinese decided to pick up the pile and barge it up the river, hanging it from the jaws of the Super Quad Kong for two and a half hours an incredibly risky operation. Because they could have dropped that pile at any time. And, you know, we think we're risk takers. These Chinese bridge builders are, uh, they, they, they are the world's most risky bridge builders, I gotta say. Once the Quad King Kong and its payload arrive at the site, the pile is lowered into position. sinking part way into the seabed under its own massive weight. The quad then drives it down to grade in seconds. An awesome demonstration of brute strength and speed. 